Okay, this is the next project. It's my uncle's tiller. Long story short, this tiller is about 50 years old. It was uh, purchased by my grandfather up in northern Maine. Um, and lived a very, very wonderful life tilling up the garden for decades. Uh, eventually, the engine was replaced. Uh, definitely not this one. This is a seven-horse Tecomski uh, vertical shaft engine. And uh, actually, there's another set of tines that go on it, but they're still up in the county, up in northern Maine. Uh, but I have took it off my uncle's hands just for a little bit. Uh, going to do some engine maintenance on it. Going to do some uh, tiller maintenance on it. Uh, the handles are broke, which is... <laughs> Uh, why all these little bolts and brackets are here now we have a welder here at the the garage so we're gonna we're gonna fix this up nice the welding that's involved with this tiller deals with the handle uh, here's a broken piece right here and uh, you can see that there's rust in that joint if I zoom in kind of close enough and at some point somebody had stuffed some metal in here and then welded the whole booger together um, and I guess it lasted for several several you know years but uh, it's broken again and you can see on the other side it's a I'll be honest with you, that's horrible. <laughs> it's a horrible weld job. The other bit of welding I've got in line for this tiller is one of the tines. These just kind of slip onto the shaft there. The other ones are fine and they're just bolted on. But this one, as you can see here, the, uh, the bolt hole is elongated and broken actually. And at some point somebody had also welded this, uh, but it's broken again. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take some more of that bed frame, cut a small section and, and wrap it around the end in a big circle. So let's do some welding. Okay, here's my temporary welding setup. I have a very cheap 100 amp arc welder right there. I probably got it for like 60 bucks at one of those traveling shows. Not very powerful. And then over on the sawhorses here, uh, I've got our victim or target, whatever you want to call it. This is kind of temporarily. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tack weld that on. We use 1 16th welding rod because that's all this crappy welder could do. And I've got to tack it up and then we're going to do some real welding and I'm not going to show this this isn't my camera so I don't want to break it so uh, I'll be right back with the welding results okay round one went pretty good uh, they are now one piece again I'm not happy with uh, I've got a big porosity hole right there where slag got in there another hole right there so I'm going to go back and lay another bead on this thing because you can put on as much weld as you want and you know, grind it right off okay uh, I'm not going to put a patch panel over this the reason being is, uh, boy, that looks bad now that I've cleaned it up. Uh, but it broke because of bad weld and it rusted inside. And I did a full penetration weld on it uh, on both sides. It's a nice firm piece of metal now. I had grinded the other one down. Uh, and I think I might uh, tack some weld there because it looks like that's horrible. So I'll grind that down a little bit with the grinder and uh, strengthen that up a little bit because that looks like an area where some rust might get in there and do some damage later down the road uh, but next primarily my next one's going to be working on that tine so I do have to make a patch for that uh, I'm doing my loop now this is some bed iron and it's uh, actually an L iron you see here uh, I took my air grinder actually just a cut off wheel cut out a strip and so this is the round strip that you see uh, this is pretty thick stuff pretty hard to, to work with uh, so I took it to the vice grip here, I should say the bench vise, and bent it over to 180 degrees, like a big C. Then you use the grips to essentially squeeze it around as you want it to. You get approximately the shape that you need. Now my tine is right over here. And I went a little too small, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do now is hammer this kitten on here. Uh, so it'll be a nice tight fit, and then I'll come back with a welder and make it forever. It's not pretty, but it's prettier and I'll put some self etching primer on that and paint it up but next step I'm gonna check it for fit and make sure my inside tolerance is okay and then I get the uh, drill press right here we're gonna resync those holes so that uh, you know, this is uh, will spin with the power shaft whoops seems like there's a little edge in there right on the inside that must have popped out a little bit when I was hammering on the, the ring to get it to fit on there so I gotta take a, a pneumatic rotary tool, get in there and clean some house, and that'll open up that tolerance, and then we'll be ready to drill. My bad. Okay, the piece is welded on. We've got a nice hole drilled in it. Fits on the shaft real nice, like so. I can just take a bolt, just like all the other bolts, and I'll put new bolts in, pops right through. Whoops, I don't have a, I don't think that's the right nut, but it is a nut. Tie it down. Now that tine, just like all the other tines, nice and secure. They're not going to fall off, not going to wobble around too bad. The handle is great. Um, 
They're all painted pretty in red, rust protection. I'm going to throw that together, put the tiller essentially back together as a machine, and then in video, step two, we'll work on the motor.